This is Mary. Welcome to the IHC Craft Room. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful dot painted cross for Easter. I really love the way this came out. It's so pretty. I can't wait to show you how to make it. So grab all your things and let's get crafty. For materials, we'll begin with an unfinished wood cross, some black chalk paint, some acrylic paint in white, gold, and purple, and some liquid matte varnish for a base coat protection and liquid gloss varnish to seal the entire project. And last of all, some pretty rhinestone stickers. For tools, we'll begin with our dotting tools, of course, a paint palette or some paint pods, a paintbrush, an emery board or some sandpaper, some Q-tips, toothpicks, a cup of water, and a wet rag. And I'm also going to be using some Gorilla Glue, but I did not record that. Before we get started with painting the base coat, this cross needs to be sanded down because it is an unfinished wood cross, so the surface is a bit on the rough side. I'm using emery boards, which is the bougie way of saying nail files, because I find it so much easier to get into the corners and around the edges using them, so that's what I'm doing. Okay, you get the point. Sand the wood until it's smooth, okay? Now, let's move on to painting the base coat. As a general rule, I usually do two thin coats of paint for base coats, but when you're using chalk paint like I am, you can totally get away with just using one coat. Once that dries, we're gonna follow it up with two thin coats of matte varnish. And again, you don't need to use matte, you can use gloss. I only use matte because I don't want the glare from my lights to get in the way of you seeing this beautiful design. Mostly because I'm gonna find ways to get in the way of you seeing this beautiful design a little bit later, stay tuned. Now that the base coat and varnish are dry, I'm gonna use a chalk pencil to eyeball the center of the cross and give myself a little guide for my center dot. Using white paint and the 13.0 white rod, I'm gonna drop that center dot and make sure to smooth it out. I mix some white and purple paint together to get this really pretty light purple, and I'm gonna use the 1.0 millimeter blue stylus to drop some super small dots around the center dot and just give it a really pretty trim. Now using the 6.0 white rod and some gold paint, we're gonna drop four dots in a box shape around our center dot. I didn't like one of those dots, so I'm gonna wipe it away and drop a new one. We're gonna continue using the 6.0 white rod, but let's switch the paint to purple. And leaving a reasonable gap, let's drop a purple dot right in between those two gold dots. And then with the smallest stylus you've got, we're gonna pull that paint down into a tapered finish. It's pretty obvious that this is really sped up, but let me state for the record that you should be going really slow and really taking your time to do this. This is not a race. I'm gonna slow this down to real time for one of these swipes so that you can see how long it takes me after years of practice. The trick to a perfect swipe is regulating the amount of paint you have on your dotting tool. If you have too much paint, there is no way for you to get down to a beautiful tapered finish. It just won't happen. You'll end up with a very thick bottom. If you don't have any paint on your stylus, then you're just gonna be scraping your dotting tool on your base coat, giving it a tickle. So you really gotta find that sweet spot of just enough paint that you're gonna pull down to that very teeny tiny perfect pointed finish. So that was one swipe in real time. So unless you happen to be incredibly drunk right now, it's very obvious that this design is not centered and it's not symmetrical. It's just super wonky right now. But don't you worry, my little starfish, we will find a way by the end of this to disguise how out of whack it is and all you're gonna see is just how pretty it is, trust me. In order to accomplish this, we'll continue adding some light purple swipes flanking each of these larger swipes to help complete the pattern that we're building. And we're gonna do that using the green three millimeter stylus. And you'll notice that I'm leaving a small gap between the purple swipes and the light purple swipes. We'll fill that in later. Before we move on to the bottom half of the cross, using the 6.0 white rod, let's add a couple of gold accent dots to each arm and to the top as well. We'll come back to these a little later. We're gonna move down to the bottom section of the cross and duplicate the same pattern that we just completed. And we're gonna do that in the exact same way all over again, using the same tools and the same paint colors and the same techniques. The only difference is that I'm gonna start off by doing the purple and lavender swipes at the same time, 
And once I've completed all four groupings of swipes, I'll go back in and drop those gold dots. I'm hoping that by reversing the order of this, it might help me keep them a bit more symmetrical. Let's head back to those gold dots that we put on the arms and at the top of the cross earlier. And we're going to use the walk the dots technique to create a really pretty design on each side of these large gold dots. Using gold paint and the 2.0 millimeter pink stylus, I'm going to place a dot and then without putting more paint on my dotting tool, I'm going to proceed to continue dotting around the large gold dot. This is going to create a series of diminishing dots down to a micro dot finish. I'm going to stack these three dots high on each side, creating a really pretty design element on each of these arms and at the top of this cross. Let's grab our smallest stylus, which for me is the yellow 0.8 millimeter stylus, and some white paint, and we're going to add some diminishing micro dots between each of these swipes. Once again, using the walk the dots technique. Next, we're going to add some white accent dots in a triangle formation around the large gold dots. For that, we're going to be using the 2 millimeter pink stylus and, of course, some white paint. Now let's add some micro dots around these large gold dots using the walk the dots technique. Some white paint and our 0.8 millimeter yellow stylus. That looks super pretty. I've let all of that paint dry and at this point you'll want to add a couple of thin coats of varnish to your cross before we start gluing on our rhinestones. I'm going to add a tiny drop of Gorilla Crazy Glue and add a large purple rhinestone right in the center of our center dot. Just wow, look how pretty that looks already. I'm going to do the same with the other center dot, putting another beautiful purple rhinestone right in the center. And now I'm going to add a medium sized gold rhinestone to these large gold dots. I'm actually going to go ahead and add a gold rhinestone to all of the large gold dots. And while I'm doing that, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I could totally put one right here in the middle. So I'm going to go grab my paint and add a gold dot using my 6.0 white rod right here in the center and let that dry before I put a gold rhinestone on that one as well. Okay, there's one last step before we're ready to hang our cross up on the wall, and that is, of course, to get the string back on. And once we have that on, we'll finally be ready to reveal this Easter-inspired beauty. I hope you enjoyed walking through this rhinestone-studded, dot-painted, Easter-inspired, hanging wood cross tutorial with me. Oh my god, I think I need an oxygen tank after that sentence. Please comment below about what you think of this super pretty cross and don't forget to subscribe for future videos so that we can continue to get crafty together. Toodaloo!